a very good morning my dear students today i'm going to start a new chapter which is chapter 1 computers storage and memory device and this is the part 1 of the first chapter now let's start with the introduction now students if you remember that when we when we were a child we were taught about alphabets and numbers and we still remember it why did you ever ask this question to yourself that why do we still remember the alphabets and numbers we don't have to memorize it every now and then because they are stored in our memory as simple as that when we were in nursery or kg we have studied about the alphabets and numbers and they are still we still remember it why because they are stored in our memory in the same way just like our human memory computers also have memory to store data and instructions for performing various task that means for performing various work computers also store the data and the instructions in their memory now what is data and what is information if you remember in class 2 i have taught you in class 1 also i have taught you about it what is data what is information now let me recall it once again anything anything that is in the form of numbers alphabets images pictures are known as data okay so that means whatever uh, numbers we are entering into the computer alphabets images pictures songs what are they they are the data data is raw and unorganized what does it mean raw and unorganized it means that it has no meaning data has no meaning for example if i ask you if i give you three things 24 56 and the plus sign it has no meaning okay it does not have any meaning unless and until we add both the numbers so when we add 24 plus 56 equals to 80 what it becomes it becomes information okay so data is data has no meaning but the information has a meaning so data is unorganized and information is organized and the information has a meaning to it that means 24 plus 56 equals to 80 so it gives us a complete meaning that we have to add 24 and 56 and the result that we get 80 it makes a complete sense it makes a complete sense okay now what is memory whatever data and instructions that are entered into the computer using the input devices like keyboard and mouse are to be stored inside the memory so that means if you are saving uh, any pictures if you are saving any movie if you are saving any uh, photos whatever data instructions that are actually stored inside the computer's memory a memory is just like a human brain okay so memory is just like a human brain where all the data and the instructions are stored now the types of memory there are basically two types of memory primary memory primary memory is again divided into two types ram and rom memory is of two types primary memory and secondary memory primary memory is divided again into two parts ram and rom secondary secondary memory is divided into three types magnetic disk that is your hard disk optical disk 
that is your CD, DVD and flash drive that is your pen drive or your memory card. So let me again revise it. Memory is of two types, primary memory and secondary memory. Primary memory is divided again into two types, RAM and ROM. Secondary memory is divided into three types, magnetic disk, optical disk and flash drive. Magnetic disk is your hard disk. If you remember, we have studied in class 2 also. Optical disk, CD and flash drive is your pen drive. So these are all what? Hard disk, CD, pen drive. These are all our storage devices. If you remember, I have taught you this chapter about the storage devices in class 2. Right? I told you that in the hard disk, CD, pen drive, we actually store the data permanently. Okay? Now, primary memory. What is primary memory? Primary memory is also known as the main memory or the internal memory. Why it is internal memory? Because it is fixed inside the CPU and CPU can directly access this particular memory, this internal memory. It is fixed on the motherboard of the computer. Primary memory, as I've told you, it's divided into two types, RAM and ROM. RAM stands for random access memory and ROM stands for read only memory. Now, random access memory. What it is? It is a temporary memory. What do you mean by temporary? Temporary means just for the time being. What happens in random access memory is this, that the information that is there inside this memory is lost when the computer is turned off. Now, let me give you an example. For example, you're painting something, okay? And you have not saved that file. So that means till the time that particular file is not saved, actually that file is in the random access memory. That is why uh, when the computer shut down or the electricity goes off and your computer is not charged, okay, so what will happen? That particular file will automatically remove from the from your computer's memory. Why? Because it is in the RAM, random access memory. In the random access memory, the file, any data is just for the time being, till the time it is not saved. And when the computer is turned off, that particular information gets deleted from that memory. Me random access memory is also called the volatile memory and it stores the data temporarily. Now, next is types of RAM. There are two types of RAM, dynamic RAM that is DRAM and static RAM that is SRAM. Now, what is dynamic RAM? Dynamic RAM stands for dynamic random access memory and what it is require? It requires the continuous power. Okay, that means your computer should have the continuous power, it should, there, it should be plugged in in the electricity so that you can refresh the data that is already stored. And static RAM, that is SRAM, it also requires the constant power, but SRAM is faster and it is less power as compared to the RAM, that is dynamic RAM. Read-only memory. That is your ROM. What is ROM? Information that is stored in ROM is permanent in nature. That means whatever the information is there in ROM, it's not deleted. It is permanent in nature. It holds the startup instructions that are required to boot the system. Now, let me give you an example. When you turn on your PC, when you turn on your computer, it takes few moments Okay, and you will see some instructions on the screen. So, what are those instructions? Those instructions actually help your computer to get it on, to get it worked. Okay, and these instructions are actually stored in the ROM. That is read-only 
memory. <coughs> Read only memory is also called the non volatile memory. Why non volatile memory? Because the data is not deleted, the instructions is not deleted in this memory. So children, that's all for today. I would request you all to kindly go through these, uh, this, these two topics that is given on page number 7 and 8. Okay. And in my next class, I will be teaching you about the secondary memory that is another type of memory. Okay. So thank you all. God bless you.